and you see after the event the entire uh, the rivers all those rivers are flooded and these all uh, um, the entire region was flooded and uh, caused several uh, disastrous landslides these are some
este training of fireware it's, it's a home for more than 75 percent of volcanoes and uh, these volcanoes are also formed in the near the plate plate, uh, plate boundary in 2021 itself there are this is a list of volcanoes that has erupted in 2021 only and the some are still continuing at present but I want to talk about this Mount Yasu Sanya Island, Vanuatu. Uh, it's an active stratovolcano here. And this has been erupting since 1774. Since then, there are some pretty uh, explosion uh, uh, happens in between, but the entire um, uh, this uh, strato active volcano is active since, uh, has started around 1774. And since 250 years, it still continues. Some aftermaths of these are very hazardous. There are some crash notes, broken houses. This volcanic ash is threatening to drinking water. It heavily produced the drinking water. The landscapes and natural scenery are destroyed. Uh, red stations are destroyed. And some ash and mud can also mix with rain and cause uh, acid rain. So these are very dangerous. Some of the examples of 2021 uh, eruption. But this is the only natural disaster which has the positive effect. These positive effects are, it creates a new land by lava solidifying. For example, Iceland. Iceland is one of the uh, examples. Uh, it tenders the soil to uh, upon the cooling of lava. It mutant made the soil highly capable of growing plants. It's also tourist attraction. Finally, geothermal energy. Now, I will not go entirely what to, uh, because India is also not prone to volcanic erupt, uh, volcanic uh, volcanism, but there are some during and after volcanic eruptions to present that we need to take care. Now this first, this important thing is first be prepared to evacuate and close all the windows and doors and wear masks because uh, this ash are uh, very harmful and after the volcano you need to clear the roofs of ash falls because they are very heavy and can also cause roofs to collapse. And these are some preparedness that we do take care when during and after our volcano eruption. Now the hydrological disaster includes flood. It causes when atmospheric conditions like heavy rain or rapid melting or snow occur. And it also depends on the geography where you're living. Where you're living in a river or um, you have the high risk of flash flood. These are some, uh, okay. And in 2021, uh, the, from February till November, there are several uh, flood events that have occurred and all were catastrophic. In Uttarakhand, February, these two cyclones created uh, floods in Maharashtra, Gujarat, Odisha, and West Bengal, which I'll discuss in the cyclone part. And uh, Jammu Kashmir, Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, everywhere you see this flood, uh, uh, the, uh, the India is flood prone country. However, these are the worldwide examples. Now, uh, these floods are in New Orleans, some are in Australia, in Vishakhapatnam due to cyclone Guru, and uh, this is 1991 Bangladesh cyclone which created a huge um, flood. So, having an ev evacuation plan in place before a flood occurs can help avoid confusion, prevent injuries, and property damage. So, the, the, these are the things that need to be taken care of. Now, I will focus with every point here because flood prone area, we are living in a flood prone area because we, we just don't know it. You should know the proximity to rivers, streams and dams where you are living. Second, during heavy rain, avoid underpasses, underground parking uh, garages and basements. Avoid hiking or camping. Don't walk in water above your ankles and turn off the electricity. It might look like these are very common things you will not attempt, but then people do attempt and then lose their life. So these are the things, preparedness, that need to be taken care of. But there are several other uh, National Disaster Management Agency in India that have given the entire preparedness list what to do before, during and after the flood. Uh, the another uh, most catastrophic disaster, hydrological disaster is tsunami. It happens uh, due to the faulting under um, uh, the earthquake of faulting under uh, sea and another is due to magma, uh, magma uh, eruption. I will give you both the examples. This is one of the disasters, tsunami in Tokyo, or this is of the in Japan. This tsunami wave depends on ocean depth uh, field. So these waves are not reaching good height in the where it occurred, but it slowly 
very uh, uh, the height increases as it goes towards land. This is the 2004 Indian Ocean Earthquake tsunami, which is catastrophic. The earthquake was 9.1 to 9.3 magnitude, and within eight hours, it killed more than 230,000 people. And this was the tsunami affected the entire uh, uh, this region, namely India, Myanmar, Indonesia. It reached the tsunami reached up to South Africa. It was very catastrophic. Another uh, tsunami that can happen that happened just now in January 2020 is the one that you watched in the This is Punga eruption and uh, tsunami. This was this was the shock wave was felt by the entire earth twice. This was that catastrophic. And the the, the scientists, the NASA researchers said that the, the eruption was 500 times powerful than the Hiroshima and Nagasaki. 500 times. This was another catastrophe. And this happened in January 2022. This very recently happened. And it affected Oceania and the entire Pacific. The tsunami and the explosion actually fell up to Alaska. They heard this explosion up to Alaska. It was very catastrophic. You see, when, this, when it started, it was 38 kilometers. But after one hour, it Reached up to 650 kilometers and captured by satellite images. So, this was one of the um, most uh, disastrous events that happened in January 2020 and it created a massive tsunami and earthquake. Now, tsunami warnings and how to stay safe. First of all, if you know that the tsunami alert is there, you need to take care of yourself from the earthquake. So, and also get to high ground as far as possible. Leave as soon as you can, and if you uh, hear or uh, see any natural signs of tsunami, you need to learn the signs of potential tsunami. And uh, if you are in boat, just if you, if you are in boat and you you hear the alert, tsunami alert, you should not rush towards the inland, but you should go towards the sea, because as, as the tsunami waves comes towards land, the height increases. So that's why if you are in boat, the, you need to face the direction of the waves and head out to sea. If you are in harbor, then you have to go in there. So just you need to take, take care of uh, when the tsunami warning is there. Now the cyclonic storm, uh, India is also prone to cyclonic storm and the, it has been uh, happened frequently since last couple of years. And uh, there are several classifications. However, India witnessed cyclonic storm severe, very severe super uh, cyclonic storm. As you can see, this is the eye. And uh, here, the wind, wind speed is minimum while the maximum speed is over the tail. These are the uh, cyclone types and uh, cyclone name which has been experienced in India. I talk about only two, cyclone Yas and Tokta, mm -hmm. which created um, landslide and flood uh, in Burg Bengal and Oregon uh, State. Now, this is cyclone Yas, which has landfall in Odisha. And the petal, the, here the technologies are only 20 because they have already warned and evacuated the entire coastal region. Another cyclone top day, uh, it actually had uh, one for one technology because this was extremely serious cyclone storm. I experienced this storm but uh, luckily when it uh, landfalled in uh, Gujarat coast, um, and, uh, it, the wind speed uh, drastically decreased. And when it entered in the inland, it was, um, the, the wind speed was... Um, very less. It was like 50 uh, uh, meter per hour. So, but still there are 81 missing and more than billion da uh, damages from it. This is the serious cyclone doctor that has been happening. And both this cyclone happened in May 2021. These are some uh, ancient cyclones which are deadliest. This was deadliest in the um, Indian uh, continent while this was in um, this was during 1970 and 1990. Both were the deadliest cyclones that have been recorded. Now, there are some uh, preparedness uh, before, during, and after, but we need to see what should you, what should we do before excuse me, this cyclone happens because now the weather they can predict. They will inform you that the cyclone will come within this much um, uh, hours. So you need to prepare yourself first. You need to communicate with your family and have a cyclone survival kit and you have to 
evacuate as soon as possible and secure your property. This needs to be done uh, before the cyclone hits. And another risk during and after are uh, very common, like you need to uh, keep valuable important documents in what container and in after there are these um, lists which shows that you have to avoid damaged areas, flood waters, inspect your home and also clean and disinfect everything. So these are some preparedness about uh, for the cyclone. Another is blizzard, which is very common in high mountain regions like snow, uh, snowstorm, and the effects are freezing to death, hypothermia, and frostbite. But how to survive this? We need to stay hydrated. We do not eat, need to eat snow because it's a trap. We do not need to do that, and it's not recommendable to even be in the car. Because there is one example, in last year only there was one family who was going from Canada to America and they were, they were trapped in this snowfall in blizzard and they died inside the car itself. So this thing can happen and there are some uh, deadliest blizzards recorded in 1972 Iran, Great Blizzard in 1978 and lastly recently January 2016 United States blizzard. Now, Another meteorological disaster that is cold wave and heat wave. Heat waves are described by temperature of 35 degree or higher, and India has has faced this in 2019. India and Pakistan, you see this. This is the temperature 50, and it has crossed actually 50, 50.8 degree, and uh, it's causing 184 degree. Just like heat waves, the cold waves are also very um, disastrous and this, are, uh, this is a recent example in January 2022 cold waves in Greece and it caused death and injury to livestock and uh, death and wildlife also. Drought. Now, uh, when I was uh, making this slide, when I was reading about drought, I came to uh, I came to know that in Karnataka there are I think more than 170 talukas and in 2018 more than 150 talukas hit this drought. So, the affected areas are not only the arid regions that is Gujarat and uh, Rajasthan, but these areas are also severely affected, but there is no interdisciplinary research going on in the drought and drought uh, phenomena. This is a prolonged dry period of in the natural climate cycle and uh, water scarcity impacts 40% of the world population, we all know this, and uh, as many as 700 million people are at risk being displaced as, as a result of drought by 2030. This was uh, according to WHO. The rising temperature is actually causing this phenomena. So the climate change is the uh, main cause. And 80, and 80 to 90 percent of natural results in the last 10 years are from flood, heat waves, drought, and several tropical cyclones. And our India is prone to all these things: heat waves, drought, flood, and several tropical cyclones. And its effects are disastrous, but I want to show you that uh, this risk of health, malnutrition, infectious disease, psychosocial stress, mental health disorders, these all are effects of this drought. So, but after all these things, they are not prepared. That's the uh, scariest thing. These are the three longest drought episodes that have been recorded in the ancient times. And in India, Gujarat, Rajasthan are severely, severely affected, and Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, and Andhra Pradesh are moderately affected states. The disaster management are trying to observe and monitor these drought. They are pla planning and preparing. Uh, they are also uh, in, they are interdisciplinary in applied research on this topic uh, of concern is going on, but still. Uh, there are no uh, good publications or no good research that has been done in the drought region. Another is hailstorm. We have, this is the unusual weather phenomena that was fine in this fall from the sky. The deadliest, uh, the worst hailstorm was recorded in 1888 in Moradabad. And the hailstorms were as large as wood tiles. You see this, you, and some places it accumulated to up to two feet high. So if two feet height, uh, the wall of ice, if it falls, it's, a, it's, it's one of the costliest disasters actually. It breaks and, and damages the entire infrastructure, everything, all property, and also leads to several deaths. So this is also called one of the costliest.
first year weather disaster. Tornado, well, tornado is more for in uh, Bangladesh region, but it is different from cyclones actually. Uh, tornado uh, are violent and they are very destructive and uh, uh, it, it is a funnel shaped whirling wind. It, uh, it also accompanies in the land and it follows apart and it disrupts, uh, uh, it, it's, it's, it's very destructive just like hurricanes and tropical cyclones. These are some deadliest uh, tornadoes that have been recorded and you see Bangladesh is more prone to uh, the tornado. This happens when the area, there is a warm air and uh, uh, cold air converges and these are the several causes. However, I want to show you this composite eight Im uh, image shots uh, of tornado that happened in Kansas. The formation of tornado when it started, when it became disastrous. You see, there are eight composite images. So this is caused by wind shear air rotation, uh, where I said that the warm air and cool air meets, and it creates when there is an instability in the atmosphere. And this is, this is also one of the catastrophic events. These are some uh, tornado prone areas in the world, and Bangladesh, Nepal, and this arid region, this glacial region, is more prone to this. This is one of the examples. So, as USA is more prone to a tornado, in there the school they give this preparedness. They aware their students and they tell them what to do when a tornado hits. We need to stay informed. We need to uh, know where to go. So the safest place is the inner wall because we need to uh, avoid the walls, uh, windows, and doors. And that's why he goes in a hallway or where there is a closed room with no windows is the most uh, safest place when tornado hits. We cannot outrun uh, tornadoes, so seek shelter immediately. These are some schools that are preparing them for the kids for uh, the tornado. Lastly, the forest fire. Australia is hub of uh, bush fires. In 2019-2020, there are several bush fires that have been happening. And in the, in the story of 2019, you see the fire generated because there were two people from the tree. This is an unwanted, accidental, uncontrollable fire which occurred in vegetation. Now, the, interestingly, the causes are new. <laughs> causes are more than the natural causes. Natural causes have lightning, volcanic activity, and spontaneous combustion of dry leaves. However, if you see the human causes, you'll be shocked because they sometimes start fire without any reason. It's deliberately caused by due to during hunting. They have the campfires that are not properly monitored, uh, bullets hitting on uh, driving so There are several different causes. But when you focus on the natural causes here, there is one of the example of lightning uh, um, that created the forest fire in Norway in USA.
still today, the, there was a rich biological diversity in ancient times and stable climate over there. So we have coped up really well, but we have crossed the tipping point already. We all know it. And we might reach to the critical stage soon. After industrial area, everything has changed. The climate change is uh, it's very uh, obvious and we all know it. There's exceedingly 2 degree Celsius uh, temperature and uh, has been increased in globally and it is affecting the entire globe and this is a very disastrous thing. It is creating, this climate change is creating frequent uh, natural disasters. Now, I've, I've explained the effects, the major tipping points, the major causes, but you see deforestation, pollution, global warming, mining, these are caused by human beings. So we cannot blame entirely to climate change. <coughs> climate change uh, has uh, uh, produced uh, several abnormal flood cycle and fire, but we cannot blame entirely to this. Disaster occurs when hazards meet vulnerability. We are vulnerable, we know this. The root causes are limited access to power structures and resources, and ideologies like political system, economic system. We have dynamic pressures like lack of training, press freedom, the rapid uh, uh, population growth, and adaptation. <coughs> And lastly, fragile local economies. Now, for example, you see, you take poverty. If a person is poor, he'll build three houses. And if the hazard it meets the hazard, then the risk will be high. So that's why it's uh, there. The risk is equal to hazard plus vulnerability. So assessment of this vulnerability needs to be done. So these assessments are done uh, in this disaster management. Uh, in every nation, they are assessing this vulnerable <coughs> zone. By protecting and restoring life goods, the reduce, uh, the, to reduce the risk faced by the commun uh, communities affected by disaster, save lives and human, reduce human suffering. They are also giving some preparedness and finally protect uh, the well being of children after by, uh, affected by disaster. These are they have given before, during, and after things. When in before, you need to know the risk and danger, purchase insurance, develop plans, assemble a disaster kit. Volunteer to help others. During any disaster, you need to put your plan into action, help others, follow the advice and guidance of officials, and finally, after any disaster, you need to repair and damage <coughs> and take steps to prevent, uh, reduce future losses. But the question is why are, uh, why are we so unprepared? People give excuses. These are the excuses given by people. Everything will be fine. If I don't have enough time. People will think I'm crazy. I can gather what I need from what I already have. You, when the disaster hits, you will not get the time to prepare for that. You need to protect yourself in advance. Even if it does not does happen here, it won't happen to me. Even if it does happen to me, it won't be that bad. Even if it is bad, then I can get emergency supplies anytime. Lastly, even if I can, can't get emergency supplies, Government will save you, but it will take time. Till that, you need to prepare yourself first for at least three days. 72 hour kit, you need to prepare when such disasters happen, before this disaster happens. Because if you prepare yourself, you can reduce the fear, anxiety, and the losses that occur to disasters. And you can also re reduce the impact of disasters. If you are in flood zone area, you need to flood proof the house, and so on. And sometimes you can also avoid this danger from it. So the more you prepare in advance, the more you will recover faster. Thank you. That was a wonderful talk. Thank you, Professor. Your talk is very good and very informative. I want to know two things. Why is it uh, so difficult to predict the advance of snakes and tsunami? And especially after recent uh, Fukushima accident, emergency preparedness in India really improved very good. And the police also did very good for reaction to that. So this is good point. And another, another point is you have talked about the tsunami. Maybe you were not born, but in 1978, there was a tidal wave. So 
it was a huge category in Bay of Bengal. 20, 20 images were released from there. Nobody ever had any idea of how it happened. It is still a mystery. You said that during tsunami, people on the land should move away from the sea, uh, towards the land. Uh, actually, in 2004 tsunami, I know in many places in Kalpatam where I was working actually, and many people who were inside the house, they were saved. And people who came out of the house and started running, they were chased by the water and they all died. So this happened for, uh, for the people who were in the uh, higher floor, uh, second floor or first floor. They escaped. 
and thinking that they have to uh, escape. Many people who came down and started running after seeing the water nearby and what just killed them. Sometimes the children escaped in the house and the parents died because they, they, they ran. So the preparedness uh, has to be, I mean, fully defined. Yeah, there was also certain other kinds of things. People who held trees or some building, some windows, they were hit by the water, but they didn't die. People who had just run it, they were simply buried.
Nice presentation, Nagesha. Thank you. So uh, I have a question based on your presentation. I have not seen any um, um, vulnerable events that has taken place in Africa. So can I consider Africa as climatically, uh, geologically very stable when compared to other places? I haven't uh, taken the example of Africa. Uh, but uh, the third uh, road, which has the barrier uh, in, uh, of the bush fire, that is in South Africa, on South Africa only. So there are many examples from South Africa, I have to include them. It's also prone to this kind of thing. Are there any questions from attendees on Microsoft Teams? Or please unmute yourself and you can raise your question. Uh, I think there are no more questions. So thanks everyone for attending and thanks Nainisha for a very wonderful presentation. And we'll meet again here at 4.55 for the talk at 5 o'clock.